Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Ooh, pack one, pick one. This is quite a pack, or rare veto. Pretty strong way to close out a game, maybe an excuse to try out the black-white life gain deck. And then all the uncommons are great, Soulseer, Tutelage is kind of its own win condition and can be its own deck. Reign of Revelation, great in any blue deck, it's especially alongside Tutelage. I'm down to try Veto and maybe hope to end up in black-white life gain. Haven't drafted a deck yet, so this seems like a good excuse. Alright, so this is where we probably take the Silver Smote Ghoul and hope to wheel Revitalize. If we're gonna try and draft Black White. Shock also decent. Pestilent Haze could be a fine sweeper. Especially against those red white aggro decks full of two mana two twos. Let's take the ghoul. Well, Witch's Cauldron, typically not a card I value highly, but it does have a lot of synergy in this deck. Otherwise, we are looking at like a Garrick's Uprising, maybe end up Black Green after all, or a Hunter's Edge. Sky Scanner, so like kind of a filler pick, or we can just take a Charger as a good two drop if we do end up Black White. Let's go with the full synergy here and see if uh, we can push it to the limit. I'm a big fan of the Falconer, probably not at its best in black-white. And Pestilent Haze I think is pretty well positioned given how aggressive the format is. So I'll probably stick to black for now and who knows, maybe we're not even black-white. Radiant Fountain, a card that might wheel, although probably still not a card you should take too highly. Are we just red-black sacrifice instead? Traitor's Greed, we've got a Witch's Cauldron already. We could just turn into the red-black sacrifice deck instead. There's no black card I want here, no white life gain cards. It's a fine speculative pick. I'm still open to the idea of being black-white life gain, but we might pivot into a sacrifice deck. Yeah, Veto is still a fine card even without any additional life gain synergies just because of the activated ability. Ooh, wow, so black seems open. Finishing blow versus eliminate. Let's see, we already have the Pestle and Haze to deal with the small stuff. Maybe I want something to deal with the big stuff. Eliminate is a more efficient card. Yeah, given how aggressive the format is, I probably still want the Eliminate. We can get more 5 mana removal later, whether it's Finishing Blow or the red one dealing 5 damage. Hmm. Well, that's a very late Stitcher, 7th pick. Pitchburn Devils is decent in the Sacrifice archetype, can sack it to the Cauldron, still deal 3 damage. Also pretty late Swooper. So I could take Stitcher maybe end up blue-black, I could take Swooper, hope to wield that Revitalize, still end up black-white. I think I'm leaning Swooper over Stitcher and Devils. Crypt Lurker seems okay. Could still go blue. Reign of Revelation ninth pick is definitely a sign that blue's open, although now we're kind of sad that we passed the Stitcher. Or I can take Devils and still on the Bread Black Sacrifice. I think I should read the signals and just take the Reign of Revelation here. Alright, there's a Revived Lice. So we have outs to be black-white, black-blue, black-red. Gloom Sower could be okay in blue-black reanimation. And what did we open? Another Pestilent Haze, Revitalize. This doesn't seem like a deck that wants Shacklegeist. There's no amazing red card for the deck. I might just take the Haze and hope to wield Revitalize. 
and make a nice controlling deck. Ooh. Well, if we're gonna try and draft a more controlling deck, there's no better two drop than Maze Mind Tomb. Falconer, if we are black white, could be fine. Thalid's decent. But Tome's great. Another ghoul. So if we can get those revitalizes on the wheel, I think our deck could come together quite nicely. With two ghouls already, a veto, and who knows what other payoff uh, cards we get for the life gain deck. This pack doesn't have much. There's like a shock for red, visionary for green, but those are the two colors we're probably not. Battalion doesn't seem great in the deck, so I'll just rare draft. I'm probably gonna build a transmogrify deck at some point. All right, a nice scoured barons for the life gain deck. There's also the swindler, which can potentially gain six life, which gets back the ghoul. Quite good with Veto too. Maybe this is a deck where I want a Swindler, but the land would definitely make the deck, and if we have a two life gain cards, it can maybe enable some of the gain three life per turn synergies. But uh, Swindler is decent here. Nothing wrong with the Feathered Imp. Another Traitor's Greed, but I think we're off the Sacrifice deck at this point. And Feathered Imp is going to make the cut in black-white. All right, take a finishing blow now. So we've got removal for days. It's kind of funny, the Apitaph Golem could be decent as a win condition if our deck is all removal, just to make sure we don't end up decking. Ooh, wow. Eighth pick, what a pack. Third Ghoul, second Revitalize, Indulgence, the Golem I was talking about. We're hoping to wheel or vitalize. If we got one eighth pick, we're probably gonna wheel the other ones and just take the third ghoul and have triple ghoul. And then take all the revitalizes we get. All right, so we're black-white. We don't have a ton of payoffs in white yet, but we might get them in the last pack. This is looking like a very grindy deck. And yeah, Falconer wields. I don't think Vessel has too many synergies here. Don't think I need to secure the scene. Falconer it is. Nothing here. We even wield the Battalion, which was probably the card I was going to take out of that pack if I didn't rare draft. And we wield the Scour Barons, perfect. All right, so last pack, we just want some black-white life game payoffs. The Uncommon's great. We even have the Tome that gains life to go with uh, the life gain synergies. And we even got a last pick Golem. We might actually play this if we think we don't have enough win conditions. Now, Glorious Anthem's not amazing in this deck, but it could still be worthwhile. It's that versus a Deathbloom Thalids. Or Swift Response, I didn't see. Yes, Response is also decent here since we're a pretty controlling deck. And then hope to wield the Deathbloom Thalid. Sure. Now I can take a Thalid, or I could take Revitalize or Blood Glutton. I mean, we're probably going to wield the Revitalizes, no one seems to be taking them. A glutton. Probably worse than Thalids, since we don't have a way of getting it back from the graveyard yet. Although we do have triple ghouls, so I guess the three drops are pretty full already. The Glutton does survive Pestilent Haze. Maybe it is the Glutton, actually. I don't think I need the ram from the mirror. Revitalize is probably going to wheel, and I think I would prefer Glutton over Thalid looking at the curve. Sure. And perfect. Indulging Patrician is a payoff we were looking for. Chorister also great here. 
and a temple, but uh, not gonna pass up on the black white payoff. Don't have a ton of duplicates for the replicator besides the three ghouls, although we do have three of them. What else are we taking here? Feet of resistance doesn't seem needed. Death Bloom Talent is always fine. Maybe I'll take the replicator anyway. We might pick up another duplicate here. Could use a bit more late game. Feet is definitely a fine card, although we don't have that many creatures that we want to be protecting. Doesn't seem like a great carry on grub deck. Didn't think any of these cards make the final cuts. Maybe the fine strike. All right, there's a feat, but there's also indulgence, which has to be the pick here. Nice recursion spell. I think I would rather play indulgence, getting back my win conditions, than protecting them with feet. Kind Sail Freebooter and Sanctum of Stone Fangs. Two great additions for the deck potentially. I mean, Sanctum has to be worth it. It doubles up as a win condition, has a ton of synergy in the deck. Yeah, I like it. Take another Indulgence. Fountain is a pretty big cost to include in the deck. Like, a colorless land is uh, not that easy to include in a two-color deck. We'll revitalize. All right, I think our deck came together nicely. Probably not playing the stewards. Cauldron doesn't seem needed. We can sack the ghoul with its own ability. We've got some good removal. Battalion can go. Lots of life gain. Probably not going to play the replicator. I don't hate including the Golem as an additional way of shuffling cards back. It gives us an out against the Teferi's Tutelage deck as well. We've got a Swift Response, Eliminate, Double Haze, Finishing Blow. Fetid Imp with Death Touch. Triple Ghoul that we can keep getting back. Veto, of course, a nice win condition. Couple Flyers. The Crypt Lurker is also great with the Ghoul, since we can discard it and get it back. So the last cut might be the Apatav Golem. Or we could play 16 lands, since our curve isn't insanely high. We've got triple Revitalize to draw cards with. And Tome can help us find lands if we need them. I think 16 lands is fine. Don't have that many mana sinks besides Veto. Yeah, let's... Stick to seven planes. I do need double black for haze, but we still have nine swamps or nine black sources, which should be enough. All right, so pretty nice black white life gain deck. Just double checking if we have anything in the sideboard that we want. Don't think so. Could always play like a gloom sower as an extra finisher, but it doesn't seem necessary. We've got double indulgence, so we can grind pretty well. Seems fine. So let's see if we can get a nice two for one with the Pestilent Haze. Not quite. All right, Patrician survives the minus two, minus two. Can hold off the Glide Master. Given that we have Haze, we can clean up all the spiders at some point, so I could play V to attack. Yeah, maybe that's fine.
Stormwing Entity. Eliminate can deal with the Weaver. So this turn I might just pass a turn and at the end of turn we can kill the Entity or the Weaver. Untap and then I could Haze plus Eliminate too. Opponent does nothing. Let's uh, try and kill the entity. Ooh, Sanctum. That's a great combo with Vito. So I could Sanctum, eliminate a Weaver, attack with Patrician. Seems okay. Aha, uh -huh, there's a tutelage. Well, we do have the Epitaph Golem to maybe counteract it. Those Revitalizes would have been nice. If they mill the Ghouls, that could actually be good for us since we can get them back from the graveyard. Alright, so if the ghoul dies, I get it back for free end of turn. So I can play it and sacrifice it, and then play Baron's hit for one. I think that's the play here. See if we connect first. Drawing extra cards can definitely be bad against Tutelage. Ooh, we're gonna get back double ghoul. But we should be able to close out the game in a timely fashion. Still 19 cards left. I can activate Vito next turn and kill them. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. Well, the synergies definitely came together nicely and a ghoul punishing the mill deck is always nice. Alright, this looks good. Turn to Sanctum is where we want to play it. The Revitalizes like hanging out in our opening hand. Uh-oh. Alright, I guess they cancel each other out. Although if we draw Vito, mine is going to be a bit better. Hooded Blightfang also... Gains life. So I probably want to attack with this one. The other one can hold off the Tavern Swindler, and then we want to maybe sacrifice them before we uh, cast Revitalize to get them both back. 
Grasp of Darkness. Very happy to see that when we're holding double revitalize. Another Swindler. So revitalize, and then I can sack one of the ghouls end of turn two. Or I can keep both ghouls on defense to block the Blight Fang. Hmm, assassins. Alright, change of plan. We'll just untap and play defense. They will draw with the Assassins, and Archer can finish off Glutton. Fair enough. But we do have Indulgence to easily get it back. Could attack with a Ghoul, hope they block and Pestilent Haze to finish off the Assassins. And if they take it, I can still decide to sack it, play Revitalize to get them both back. Yeah, I could also Indulgence, but it wouldn't be full value since I'm only getting back one creature, really. Gets back the Blight Fang. That can kill the Assassins, which is great. So, any attacks. Probably just pass a turn. Do want to kill the Assassins now for some reason? I'll wait. Might be more incentivized to attack with their creatures and trades, knowing they have assassins still alive. But then we can kill it. Now I could sack the ghoul, but we don't have a way to gain three life right away, so we'll wait. And start beating down. Keep a Feathered Imp on defense to trade off for the Blind Fang. I could keep a land in hand to play around Band deal, but I also need a lot of mana in case I want to Indulgence and play stuff out of the graveyard. Another Assassins, all right. And another Grasp, sure. Tome's not bad. Keep this ghoul, I think. Would be pretty epic if we could cast double haze in the same turn. I'll wait for now.
Can of course indulgence for four mana, get back my super and my glutton. It's totally reasonable too here. Does mean I don't get to keep up Death Touch on the Fetid Imp. So I might be better off playing the Tome this turn, drawing by paying two. See what we get. Falconer survives Pestilent Haze, I'm fine playing it. And that still keeps up the Death Touch. Can maybe set up an attack with uh, Falconer and then Haze after they block to finish off one of their creatures. I'll take the three. The want them drawing with Assassins. Double haze, there it is. Alright, so we can wipe the entire board essentially. And still draw with a ghoul. And once the board is clear, we should be ahead thanks to the tome and the indulgence. So I don't actually mind wiping the entire board. So let's attack with all. Sack ghoul before damage, probably. There's a chance I just need to cast a single haze. But I'm prepared to cast both. Yep, so damage happens. I could scry with a tome, but I'm fine just drawing with it. Vitalize can get the ghouls back, he makes this one mana. Epitaph Golem to prevent decking. Get back Glutton and probably Swooper over Falconer, given the Death Bloom in play. Next turn we can give this flying to attack for four. Ghouls can attack. More ways of getting them back with the glutton hitting for four here. Twelve cards remaining. Just play a swindler. Alright, I think next turn we can finally attack for lethal. Super grindy game, Silver Smote Ghoul, definitely our MVP. And the double pestilent haste turn was pretty sweet. Well, this hand's amazing. Tome, Ghoul, and Veto. All I want out of this deck. I wouldn't mind hitting a couple land drops, so I might scry in the first few turns. Visionary dies to Haze, but I'm probably better off playing my Ghouls first. Keep the land so we don't need to scry again. Could also play Veto that doesn't die to the Haze. I've got a few ways we can play this. I think I'm okay just playing the Ghoul, since once we flip the Tome here, we'll be able to get them back. Opponent on Sultai. 
Dryads, all right. Now I'm definitely open to the idea of casting Pestilent Haze. Pestilent Haze has also been great this draft, by the way. And uh, do I scry? I can wait until next turn, I think. All right, we drew the land, so no need to scry anymore. Attack, they might even trade for the Death Bloom, but if they don't, that's fine. Ooh, Sanctum of Calm Waters. Okay. No real need to scry unless I'm in a hurry to gain four life, which I'm not. So I can go Ghoul plus draw or play Glutton. I guess Ghoul plus draw is better for now. Opponents might be on a tutelage deck, they've got a lot of draw effects. Lots of blockers for the ghoul. And we're fine making these trades. Next turn I could play Vito before we attack to essentially deal for damage. Alright, opponent does have multiple Sanctums, so this can now deal two damage if they discard land or shrine. And of course this will provide card advantage instead of just card selection. Pestilente is looking good. So I kind of want to just trade for the imp. So I get my ghouls back instead of using haze. And then there's only one creature to get back with Indulgence, so we'll draw with Tome instead. Probably should have played Swamp in case I want to sack a Ghoul here. But I do want to get some planes in play as well. Gnarled Sage for... Six here, but for four on defense next turn. And there's Revitalize. So I can just activate Veto, drain them for a whole bunch. The Tome also four life, so that's four more damage. and revitalizes three more damage, so they could just be dead here. Yeah, they're gonna kill the ghoul to prevent that from happening. But now Pestilent Haze is looking good. And we get the ghouls back because we gain three life. And uh, no need to flip the tome, 
can save it as a way to get the ghouls back once again. Yeah, Vito plus ghoul is kind of disgusting. They do have the Sanctums now to keep the ghouls in check, but they're kind of forced to spend all their extra cards to kill ghoul. Alright, more Sanctums. So now they can kill Vito, but we can get it back with Indulgence. Alright, points empty-handed. They didn't have any things to discard, so I think they're just dead now. Can activate Vito. Attack, revitalize, plus tome is more than enough. Alright, pack one, pick one. Paying dividends here, even against a Sanctum deck. On to the next one. On the play. Decent hands. Hopefully we can hit our third land drop without needing to revitalize, so we can save it for Ghoul. I might play the Fetid Imp and an extra Sanctum. Got to hold off this Archfiend's Vessel. But uh, an early Sanctum is definitely quite powerful. Our deck is designed to go late, so we'll get full value. So hopefully we draw land so we can play Patrician or Ghoul before we have to revitalize. Stitcher, so point on the reanimation deck. Yeah, gonna have to try and draw land. So blue-black with Stitchers could see the whale getting discarded and then reanimated, or... Yep, there it is, Waker of Waves. And the DOS shut down Feathered Imp and Patrician, if that's in play. So that card could give us some issues. And they can get it back next turn. So, I've got some options. I guess I can play Lurker discarding the Ghoul, and then we might get it back later once we gain three. Yeah, let's do that. Because we'll need to find removal for the Whale. Discards the Megalodon, which has Hexproof. Pretty tough to deal with. Death Touch was one potential way, but they dealt with a Fetid Imp. Opponent does nothing. Indulgence can get back Fetid Imp, but if they get back the Whale over the Megalodon, then the Imp is pretty useless, since it's not going to have any power. So I'll just play Golem for now. And what do they get back? Waker of Waves, okay. We do have a couple outs. Finishing Blow. We've got the two mana kill a tapped creature. I 
Eliminate doesn't quite do it. So yeah, getting back my uh, Fetidim doesn't accomplish a whole lot. So I don't have much of a play this turn, sadly. Attacking, probably not even worth it. Maybe they have a cancel in hand. And if that's the case, and they don't counter Patrician, it's going to be even harder to deal with the Waker of Waves. Ooh, wow. <laughs> well, that's probably game over. Sublime Epiphany copying Waker of Waves. Nice. Yeah, that happens. It's quite a bit better than Cancel. Although, yeah, this has Convert Mana cost 7, so it still doesn't die to Eliminate. Despite being a token. Yeah, I think we're dead. Take 14. Yeah, I don't really see a way out. So, um, nice card, but not what we need right now. They can tap a creature down with a Kraken too. So even if I find a single spot removal spell, we're still definitely dead. See what we can draw. Well, there's a finishing blow, so maybe if they didn't have Epiphany, we would have been able to deal with the Waker of Waves and then slowly take over. GG's. Opponent's got a nice deck. Yeah, Stitcher plus Waker of Waves is kind of the uncommon combo in Dimir. That's what you're trying to do every game, basically. And then if you've got some nice rares on top, then you've got yourself a nice Dimir deck. On the draw, but we've got a nice controlling hand with Tome into Pestilent Haze. Our deck is definitely better suited to fight small creature decks with Double Haze than it is Dex trying to reanimate giant uh, whales out of the graveyard. And Chorister might indicate a deck where Haze is good, and we've got two of them, so it better be. Although Black White, so they're a life gain deck, and not a Boros Aggro deck. Probably gonna scry to hit my land drops early on. If we draw Ghoul, we can discard it to the Crypt Lurker. Ooh, Blank Guard, nice. Pestilent Haze likes to see that. Can we get another creature that dies to it, please? A nice Deathbloom Thalad, perhaps? Take three. Or even better. I didn't want to ask for Battalion, like, I was okay with the Death Bloom giving the opponent a 1 1 token, but I'll take a Battalion any day. Land is good. And this is kind of a blowout. Falconer. Not bad here, but we can play Lurker to block it. Don't think I need to scry. I might naturally draw land 5. And then I would rather have Tomb to draw some cards. 
And actually, let me discard uh, the Swindler here. Don't think we need it. And there's land 5 for finishing blow. Ah, Patrician's not bad. So this turn we might... Just draw with a Tome and Swift responds a Patrician if it taps. Could also draw now. Alright. We'll pass. So now the Falconer can attack and bounce off the Lurker. So I'm probably going to end up killing both the Patrician and the Falconer Adepts. So I guess I should kill the Patrician now and the Falconer next turn. Fatted Imp can also hold off the Falconer Adept, so maybe I don't need to finishing blow quite yet. Pestilentes also cleans up all the bird tokens in case they have an answer to the Fatted Imp so it doesn't get out of hand. So we can draw, play Imp, keep up Death Touch. Ghoul's also a nice one. We definitely have the late game covered with Tome, Ghoul, and Indulgence. Yeah, we'll just trade for the Falconer. Alternatively, I can just keep eating the bird tokens with my Fetid Imp and keep bouncing a Lurker off the Falconer Adept. And they've got another one. Suppose playing Haze first to get rid of the birds and then playing the Ghouls makes more sense. This one not as much of a blowout as the previous Pestilent Haze. But those bird tokens had to be dealt with. So I've got two blockers to hold off the Falconer Adepts. Still have our finishing blow in hand to deal with any large creature. And then I kind of want to trade off the ghouls before we gain a four life with Tome so we get them back from the graveyard. All right, synergy is coming together nicely. I should even consider attacking with the Silver Smote Ghoul since again, we've got a second one on defense now. If they kill this, that's fine. Yeah. Start getting in some damage. Another boss race Acolyte could be pretty effective. They've got their own Sanctum of Stone Fangs. That's alright. Not a bad blocker here. So I think we send the ghouls sideways and we kind of hope that our opponents eventually trades for it. can also decide to just sacrifice a ghoul with its own ability and get it back once we flip the tome. I keep saying flip the tome because it's a reference to treasure map where we flipped it. I guess we don't really flip the tome, we just uh, exile it. Our own falconer. Well, at this rate, our opponent's going to die pretty quickly.
can also maybe use my Epitaph Golem end of turn, putting a removal spell back into my deck. Want to keep the creatures in there for indulgence. Eliminate a nice one too. They could block with a chorister and then pump it, and then I might in eliminate it in response. Or I could just sag the ghoul so they don't gain the life. I'm fine to let damage happen at this stage. Yeah, let's just sag the ghoul instead. Hello, Vito. Scry. And that's four damage. Sweet. Well, the turn three Pestilent Haze definitely put us in a good position. And then it uh, didn't take much to win the game. Another nice synergistic hands. Haze to hold off any aggro decks. Tome and then double ghoul with revitalize to get them back for the more grindy matchups. And Tome helps us hit our land drops. Although another blue-black deck might not be our favorite matchup. Definitely prefer to face aggro, which most decks in M21 are pretty aggressive. Maybe a tutelage deck. No third land drop. Scoured Barons. Hmm. I guess it's fine, I'll just play it and draw with a Tome instead. I would like to punish their stumble by just curving out with a bunch of ghouls, but if I miss on a land after I bottom the barons, I'll be pretty sad. Don't have to draw now, can wait. As you noticed, I put the scry on upkeep, but too late, the, the tome already skipped to our main phase. That's okay, we can just play ghoul here. Swift response can be a decent answer to riddle form, but it does require keeping up two mana. Definitely want to scry towards lands. Both missing land drops. There's a plains. So we could swooper, or I can just play another ghoul, try and get them sacrificed before we flip the tome again. Can play a falconer, I've got some options. Maybe we should play the falconer, which can get out of hand if it goes unanswered. A land three. And then Swooper giving Adept Flying could also be nice if they can't turn this into a creature at instant speed. Yeah, probably don't need to scry anymore, we'll save the Tome to synergize with our ghouls. Fine, seeing a Thalids. So this turn we're just gonna swoop. I'm fine trading ghoul for Thalids. So they might have kept an instant to turn Riddle Form into a creature. But I can finish it off with Pestilent Haze if they block. Although I don't really want to haze my own Swooper. 
So maybe I don't send the Falcon Earth this turn and just send a Swooper. And play some more Ghouls. I can also sacrifice the Ghoul and then draw with the Tome to get them both back. Capture Sphere turns on the Riddle form. Sure. We do have a Crypt Lurker in the deck, which can maybe sacrifice a Swooper with Capture Sphere on it. Although now I could consider attacking and then casting Pestilent Haze if they block. Maybe just send a token. Alright, so the ghouls are going to start turning sideways, and they won't be stopped, at least for some time here, with a revitalize and a tome to provide the life gain we need. Teferi's Tutelage. That's a scary card, so now we really need to put the pedal to the metal. Can't sit here and dirtle forever, otherwise we're just going to die to that. There goes my Epitaph Column, so that's our plan against Tutelage. Glutton's not bad, so we'll attack. Play Blood Glutton, hope they trade for Ghoul, and get both Ghouls back. Although, there is a third Ghoul in the deck that they could mill with Tutelage that we could also get back, but I'm not gonna get greedy here. We just need to apply as much pressure as possible. The scry doesn't matter because of tutelage, so they can mill a land. The indulgence can get back the Apatev column and the super. So now golem's another potential plan to stop the tutelage from milling us. Still have 16 cards remaining. And our opponent's taking lethal here, so... Didn't even need the Apitaph Golem after all. Maybe they have a, a Grasp of Darkness. But I struggle to see how they are gonna mill 16 cards when they only have a single blue source. Put a stop on upkeep just in case, so we can activate the golem before we take our draw step. Haha, <laughs> double tutelage, nice. And our opponent packs it in, alright. So we even managed to beat a tutelage deck. Alright, time for the final boss, last game of the draft. Not the most exciting hand, but still a keep. Ooh, our hand got a lot more exciting. Could have kept uh, Scarred Barons for later to maybe combine with the one life from Sanctum and the one life from Patrician to trigger Patrician. But I don't want to run into a situation where we can't curve out because we have a tap land in hand. The Imp does do a good job of holding off patricians. But it does require them to keep a black mana every turn. I could play Lurker, discarding an Epitaph Golem. Sure. Although if they are a Tutelage deck, I'll probably want the Epitaph Golem. So it's kind of tricky. Could also just play 3-4. 
Gale Swooper also trades for Fetid Imp. But I can maybe go Lurker into Swooper. Ah, it gets cancelled. Still have Death Touch up. So no attacks. Now we can attack with the Patrician. And Ghoul's great. Kind of like playing the Ghoul and then next turn Swooper to give it flying. Opponent doesn't want to attack into the ghoul and trade. So we'll just untap. Glutton's good too. Maybe I'll wait a turn on uh, playing the swooper so we can give Glutton flying. Especially if I draw another land, I could attack with a Glutton and a ghoul. And then if they take the damage from ghoul, I can sacrifice it and get it back thanks to the lifelink. Gormans, alright. I know what I'm sacrificing. So I can't attack, but we do have an answer for when they attack. And Tome is probably going to force them to attack, because they can't really sit there doing nothing. Now I could still draw, take 5, and then Swift Response next turn. Which I don't hate. At 26 we can probably afford to take 5. Another answer to Gormand. I'll just draw. Hello Vito. That's quite a draw. So... Got a ton of options. Ideally, we play Vito in the same turn that we can get a big attack in with Blood Glutton and maybe flip the Tome so we can basically kill them on the spot. So, how about this turn? I just Swift Response, Gourmand, draw with the Tome, kind of play it slow. Another ghoul is great. Alright, Freebooter can take my finishing blow. Can't take Veto. Rise again gets back Gormans. Alright, that's pretty good. Patrician can still drain the point, I guess, without attacking. Glutton can get back the Silver Smote Ghouls from the graveyard. I think I'm okay sacking the Glutton. And then now I might cry for land so I can play Ghoul plus Veto. Opponents empty handed so they don't have any removal that we know of. And then next turn I can set up an, a nice attack with Vito, and then Patrician can drain him too. It's pretty good. So... What does Tome do? So Tome drains for 4, means Patrician drains for 3. I think I still take my draw step for now. Ooh, Indulgence. Can't forget about the Stone Fangs putting my point to 11. Alright, so let's just... Draw a card. Deal 4. And then I can Indulgence back. Crypt Lurker and Glutton. Of 
Crypt Lurker can sacrifice the Ghoul, which comes back end of turn. And next turn I can just activate a Veto and win the game. Stitcher, alright. So your opponent had a nice blue-black reanimation deck, but our synergies are just a little bit too strong here. We've got all the uncommons, all the rares, and our opponent packs it in. Sweet. Glad we got to seven wins with this deck. Definitely had the right cards for it. Lost a game to the reanimation deck, as we mentioned. And then one game where we didn't have too much agency as we drew all the lands in the deck. So this was a deck for those that missed the drafts. And uh, the triple Silver Smote Ghoul, definitely the highlight of the deck, alongside triple Revitalize to get them back. Double Indulgence to get back the key creatures like Patrician and Vito. And then the one of Blood Glutton also performed quite well. A bit of evasion with the Falconer and the Swooper and the Feathered Imp. We didn't get to flip any coins with a Swindler, sadly. But you can see how it could be good in this deck with triple Ghoul and Patrician and Vito as payoffs for gaining three life in one turn. The two copies of Pestilent Haze also overperformed. Definitely got some nice two and three for ones with it. And the Sanctum and the Tome also. A very nice two mana plays. So overall, this is pretty close to the ideal black white life gain deck. Let's crack some packs. Ooh, pack one, pick one. I know what I'm taking. Joel Ryle, also a very interesting card to try and build around in draft. So at its best in blue-green, but even in red-green I've seen this do some work since you've got your uh, two mana discard a card draw two, you've got your auger that can discard and draw at uncommon, so even in red, there's some draw effects crash through another one. So I think red-green and blue-green are probably the color pairs where this is going to be at its best. Primal Might, great removal spell too. Don't know if it's better than Basri's Acolytes, but they're definitely the two better cards in the pack. All the freebooters totally fine too. Necromantia, one of the few unplayable rares in the set. Overall, not the most powerful pack in existence. I like aggressive white decks, so I'm tempted to take a Chorister here, but Geyser can have its moments. The Greed, if you can build around it in a Sacrifice deck, can be quite strong too. And Bresh Taunter had a few games where this was pretty much unbeatable. Against green decks especially, this is going to be very hard to beat. So, pretty powerful first pick. It's also splashable at just single red. Basri's Lieutenant, also a great card. White is one of the better colors. Goes great into the Basri's Acolytes, white aggressive decks, and in green-white, if you get some other Plus one counter synergies is great, but you don't have to be green-white. Any white tech is happy to have it. And Subira, also a great card for the red aggressive decks. Great alongside the library Larcenist in blue-red especially. Get to draw a lot of cards with that combo. Alright, well that was a successful draft I would say. Happy with how it turned out. We even opened the vault along the way. Definitely need those mythic wild cards after crafting a few jank decks. So yeah, that's gonna do it for me today. Wanna thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.